Icon here going over the Survivor Series, the best of the best of the best of the best. And we don't have NXT represented tonight. It's traditional Raw versus SmackDown. Um, I think there's about seven, six or seven matches on the card. And then we have the Undertaker tribute. So it promises to be a good show despite the fact that there are no... There are no stakes for winning the Survivor Series match. It's, it's not like the sole survivors of the Survivor Series team get a title shot or anything. But it's still interesting because of the participants that are involved. So let's uh, get things started and talk about this pre chat <laughs> So let's get things started and talk about this pre-show match, which was basically a battle royal. And the funny thing about this battle royal, this was the most star-studded battle royal <laughs> I've ever seen. Like, usually battle royals are full of, like, the bums, the scrubs, and the low-tier guys. This battle royal had the Hurt Business, it had Ricochet, it had Jeff Hardy, Rey Mysterio, it had The Miz. You know, and I was just like, there's some big names <laughs> in this battle royal. Which was actually cool because it, um, it made me care about it more. But it's still WWE, so of course, like, all the black people got eliminated. There was literally a spot where, like, all the black and brown folk just got eliminated, like, one after the other after the other. And then um, Apollo was the last one that he got tossed. So it comes down to the final four, which was because Dominic Mysterio was in the Battle Royal. And if you're, like, you're sitting here trying to tell me that Dominic Mysterio in a Battle Royal lasted longer than his own dad because Ray got tossed early. Dominic Mysterio lasted longer in this Battle Royal than Ray Mysterio, The Hurt Business, Ricochet, Jeff Hardy, Apollo Crews, <laughs> Elias, and when it actually, you know, and when it did come down to the final three, it was pretty much Jeff Hardy, uh, Dominic Mysterio, not Jeff Hardy, because Jeff Hardy was the fourth, he was the fourth to last person eliminated. Then it became, um, Chad Gable, uh, Dominic Mysterio, and The Miz. Uh, there was a moment where The Miz got thrown over the top rope, but he rolled under the bottom rope, but then got drop kicked back onto the floor. Because he rolled through the bottom rope, it counted as, you know, like, he, um, like, he, he was good, like, he was safe, so, so when he got kicked back onto the floor, it wasn't a legit elimination, they do this all the time, every single time there's a battle royal, there's always a convenient way for one person to get knocked out onto the floor, just to come back in and steal the win at the last second, and that's exactly what happened, um, Dominic and Chad actually had a real decent exchange, you know, Chad Gable pulled off a three, um, a two belly-to-belly, -belly, one German suplex combo, you know, but, Ray, um, I was gonna call him Ray. Dominic Mysterio hit the six one nine. He eliminated Gable, and then the Miz came out of nowhere, threw um, threw him over the top rope, and the Miz wins the uh, battle royal. So I guess if we're keeping score here, if we're keeping count, that's one, that's one point for team, that's one point for Raw, because you know he did have his Raw, his USA Raw T-shirt on. So, um, good battle royal. I like the participants in the battle royal. I just hated how they treated the black folk and. You know, again, and like that tired trope of somebody just being knocked out on the floor. But, um, but I said, but as far as like name recognition and participants, it was actually a pretty cool battle royal. So, um, kudos to the Miz who still got the money in the bank, brief the money in the bank briefcase, and we'll see if that plays a factor into tonight's show. All right. So on to the main show. As you can see, I got my red and blue on SmackDown versus Raw. I'm typically a SmackDown guy. I'm um, SmackDown's my show, but we'll see how this goes. So the show started. Um, it definitely started with um, the men's Survivor Series tag match, which was surprising because I thought they were going to start with the women. Um, when you know both teams came out, and from the beginning, I was like, I felt that I was upset when Otis got put on the team because I was like, once you put Otis on the team, I can no longer take the SmackDown team seriously. So, like you guys are now officially a joke to me, and I felt that it should have been Big E that should have got the spot instead of Otis. But after seeing how this whole entire thing played out, I'm actually glad Big E was not on this team. When the match started. Seth Rollins, basically, when he got tagged in, he got on his knees and basically just, like, you know, kept his arms out, you know, as to say, like, hit me, take me out, take me out. He got bro kicked. Seth got pinned, didn't even put up a fight or a sweat. And if that's what they're going to do to get Seth off the show because he has to be with his pregnant wife, that was just very stupid. It was very embarrassing, and it was honestly a waste of a roster spot on the team. And if that, if that's what they were, you know, regardless if Seth was going away or not, if that's what they were going to do with Seth, they should have just had someone else be on the team. Because, again, that was just a complete waste of a spot. So then Seth gets eliminated. Um, you know, everybody else gets eliminated. Corbin gets eliminated. Everybody, you know, Kevin Owens gets eliminated. Um, Jay Uso was actually the last person. Um, he got beat. He, he came off the top rope. And when he came off the top rope for the splash, Keith Lee caught him 
had him in the Samoan drop position, and then th- threw him up, turned him over into the spirit bomb position, and spirit bombed him. And I'm like, if Keith Lee is not champion <laughs> within the next year, there is a problem. He did get new theme music, by the way. There's new Keith Lee theme music, so everybody can stop bitching on Twitter. Um, and that was it. Clean, clean sweep by Team Raw. Um, which was, like I said, you know, I mean, I ended up, I picked Team Raw, so, I mean, I'm happy that my pick, you know, ended up getting the victory, but it was very disappointing because, like I said, I'm usually a SmackDown guy, but, um, happy for Keith Lee as far as Team Raw is concerned. Next up was the tag team match, the SmackDown, uh, tag team champions, the Street Profits versus the Raw tag team champions, the New Day. Uh, New Day came out dressed up and Biggie was with them. All three members of the New Day came out. Biggie even did the intro. They came dressed out in the outfits that they're going to wear in the new video game that's coming out. Uh, the Street Profits came out dressed in blue. And this match was, you know, everybody thought this match was going to be good. And, it, and, and, you know, and it was like it was a great it was a great tag team match. Um I couldn't call this one as far as like predictions are concerned because I'm a fan of both Street Profits and The New Day, so I just sat back and just watched this thing as a fan. And you know, there was a moment where Kofi had came off, like where uh, Montez was on the was on the outside, and then Kofi did his um his trust dive, you know, and then when he did the trust dive, he elbowed, you know, because Tez when Kofi goes over the top rope, Montez was supposed to catch him. I mean. Tez didn't like catch him, catch him, and when Kofi flew off the top rope, he busted Montez Ford in the face um, with an elbow, and I thought Tez was out after that. Um, there was a moment where Xavier Woods did a gorilla press slam into um, into a gut buster. You know the the Street Profits, they um you know they 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 you know they had their their quick tags going. You know Doc, Dawkins, he did a new move. It was like a butterfly, like a like a butterfly hook, and then he lifted him up and turned it into like a neck breaker. So that was pretty cool. Like it was a good, it was a damn good match. But surprisingly, um, you know, off the off the uh, the blockbuster, like the 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 the, the modified LOD um, blockbuster finisher, the Street Profits picked up the victory against the New Day, and I was very shocked. You know, like they let the young boys get some, <laughs> like like get that dub, and you know, but I guess it does make sense because. The New Day, they're ten-time champions, so it's like they don't need the win per se. But um, it was like I said, it was a good, it was a good match. It was good to see both um, you know, both team, both teams in there. Nice to see Kofi and Montez Ford mix it up. But the Street Profits got the win, so if we're not counting the Battle Royal, it's now tied one-one. SmackDown versus Raw. The next match up was the middleweight <laughs> championship match. The universe, uh, the Universal, the Intercontinental Champion Sami Zayn versus the United States Champion, the Almighty, the CEO of the Hurt Business, Bobby Lashley. And there's really not much to say. Hey, y'all know damn well Sami Zayn was not beating old Bobby Lashley, <laughs> and and Sami did run. He did try to run. The Hurt, the entire Hurt Business was there. They were at ringside. They surrounded the ring to make sure Sami couldn't run. Sammy tried a couple of little tricks or whatever, but in the end, he tapped out to the Hurt Lock like everybody else does. That's what he gets for making fun of the United States. And the Almighty once again proves that he's the most dominant champion. And on the pre-show, Booker T said that Lashley being United States champion is cool, but he needs to eventually get out of the United States championship division and go on to the heavyweight division because the guys in the middleweight division, they're a lot smaller than him, and he needs to take on the big boys, and I agree 100%, but it's cool as hell to watch him run through everybody until that happens. So we'll see what happens, you know, going into the Royal Rumble, but um, so now it's, um, it's Raw 2, SmackDown 1, with the Almighty picking up that victory. Next up was the women's match, Asuka, the Raw Women's Champion versus the Balls, Sasha Banks. This was the match that I was actually definitely looking forward to more so than um than anything else on the card, and it it started I mean it started off pretty regular, but then like you know the action picked up after a while, you know out of all the the quote unquote horse women, I believe that Sasha was the only one to this point who hadn't beat Asuka. because you know Charlotte beat her at WrestleMania, Becky Lynch I believe beat her at the Royal Rumble last year, and Bailey beat um Asuka at SummerSlam to open the show. So you know and you know and and, I, and Sasha's never beaten Asuka before up until this point. So that was the whole thing. Like so, like this whole year has been about Sasha Banks basically just like silencing all the critics. Whereas like she beat Bailey, she defended her title, and now in this particular match, which was a great match by both of them Sasha Banks defeated Asuka um she didn't make her tap but you know Asuka did go for her um you know for her um her her kick her um yes kick I guess if you will you know Sasha actually took that kick to the face and then when you know when when Asuka hit the ropes 
and tried to, um, you know, I guess hit Sasha Banks with the with the running knee or the hip attack. Um, Sasha like ducked and like rolled through, and she got it with the roll up pin. And you know, Sasha Banks, like I said, she did it for Team Blue, Team SmackDown. The boss picks up the victory, and now she can move on and find Carmella and beat that ass because Carmella been sneaking, <laughs> you know, been sneaking up from behind lately. And it's officially now two to two. Um two wins for Raw, two wins for SmackDown, and again, if we're counting the Battle Royal that the Miz won, then I guess it's 3-2, um, Raw win it, Raw, Raw with the edge, but if we're not counting the Battle Royal, it's basically tied at this point, and then we got the Raw women's tag match coming up, and then the, the champion versus champion match. Next up was the women's Survivor Series tag match, Team Raw versus Team SmackDown. You had Natalia, uh, Bianca Belair, the captain, the Riot Squad, Ruby and Liv, and... Bailey versus Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, Peyton Royce, uh, Lacey Evans, and Lana. And this was a very entertaining match. Um, I, I picked Team SmackDown to win because I felt that they had the better team than Team Raw did. There was, you know, they're still playing off the whole, but the storyline, the storyline though belongs to Raw with the whole Lana versus Nia Jax situation with the tables and everything. So. You know, it went on as followed. Um, Bailey was <laughs> Bailey um, had an armband that said "Team Captain," and she was actually the first person eliminated by Peyton Royce. Uh, Peyton Royce was then eliminated by Natalia. Um, so Peyton and uh, um, so Natalia, Natalia and Bailey were like they were the veterans, but they were the first to eliminate it on Team SmackDown. Um, Peyton Royce tapped out to the Sharpshooter. Uh, Nia Jax. Um, she stayed in. Shayna stayed in. Shayna, Shayna got disqualified because she put Bianca in the um, in the in the chokehold, and she didn't break the count. Like Bianca got to the ropes, and um, Shayna wouldn't break the count. So you know she got disqualified for that. Um, I'm trying to think like who else got up. Like <laughs> I forgot some of the eliminations here. Lacey Evans. Um, Lacey Evans got beat by by Liv Morgan. Um, Liv Morgan got beat by, um, I believe she got beat by Sh- Shayna and Nia Jax. So it comes, so in the end, there was a moment where, like, Lana had tagged herself in. And she was actually doing pretty good. She was doing good. And the whole time she was in the ring, her entire team kept screaming at her to tag out. So then, when she put, she put someone in a headlock, and then when Lana tried to tag out, nobody wanted to tag her. So <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I gotta make up your mind. And, you know, so then... They got mad, and then when Lana tagged out, Shayna and Nia made Lana stand on the steps. They told her to get off the apron and stand on the steps, and they said, like, just stand there and you know, for the entire match. So Lana basically just stood on the steps the entire match. So Team Raw was pretty much going four on five. So then it comes down to the last three people. It was Bianca. Bianca was the sole member for the Survivor for the SmackDown team, and Nia Jax and Lana were the last two for the Raw team. Meanwhile, Lana's still standing on the steps because she was in timeout. So <laughs> Um, Bianca and Nia were fighting on the outside. They were basically like brawling on the outside, throwing each other into the steps and into the barricade. And then, unfortunately, because I was hoping that, that Bianca was going to win for Team SmackDown and become the sole survivor, but both Nia and Bianca got, got counted out. They both got double counted out. So since all the other members of the team got eliminated and Nia and Bianca got counted out, Lana was the only person left, and Lana won the match. Lana basically won the match, but, you know, by, you know, but literally by process of elimination. She just happened, like, Lana was literally the sole survivor, so Lana is the winner of the SmackDown women's tag match, and she didn't even do a damn thing to, you know, to earn that victory. Nia was pissed. She was screaming at Lana. Bianca, the look on Bianca's face said it all. Bianca's like, I can't believe this heifer <laughs> won this match. Like, Bianca was just shocked, and... You know, like I said, I was rooting for Team SmackDown. I was I was rooting for Bianca Belair and the Riot Squad. I wanted the three of them to be the sole survivors, but um, I'm, I'm low key happy for Lana because Lana's been going through a lot of ish as of late. So to see her, you know, like get get pick up a big win would be good, and it can continue the storyline and the feud going forward for um, you know for Raw. So we'll see we'll see what happens. Um, there was really no beef on the SmackDown women's team, like no like real harsh beef. So there was nothing about the SmackDown women's team where you're just like, oh, okay, so these two are gonna start a feud when Friday comes around. Like none of that really happened. So I'll be interested to see like what happens on on friday night but um if we're lucky we'll get a we'll get a feud between bailey and bianca belair because i think that's the next place this whole thing needs to go but um like i said good uh good 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 match and um congratulations to lana for being the sole survivor 
So now that things are basically in Raw's favor, um, Raw's up 3-2, to two, we have the final matchup of the night, which is the WWE Champion versus the Universal Champion, Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns. And this one went exactly how you would expect it to go. Um, both of them beat the living tar out of each other. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot different because when you watch a lot of matches where there's a size difference and then you see two big ass grown ass men <laughs> you know like going at it it's like the match is very it's very different they put each other through barricades there were superman punches suplexes like all all this craziness uh but towards the end um drew mcintyre hit the the um the kick that he does i forgot the kick and and, and you know and then roman had ran into the referee and you know the referee got knocked out so once the referee got knocked out then jay uso showed up you know, super kick Drew McIntyre, Roman hit Drew McIntyre in the nuts, they basically, like, double teamed Roman, they, they, they basically double teamed Drew McIntyre, and they, uh, you know, and then because of that, because of the double teaming and everything, uh, Roman was able to get the pin, and the show ends with Roman Reigns on top, who tied it up, because the, the winners from SmackDown was Roman Reigns, Sasha Banks, and the Street Profits, and for Raw, they got Bobby Lashley, and they got both Survivor Series tag matches, which basically means that outside of um, the almighty Bobby Lashley, SmackDown is the superior brand when it comes to um, singles competition, and Raw's obviously better at five-on-five tags. So, <laughs> and, uh, and, and that was it. And then, you know, after that, like, everybody came out to do the Undertaker tribute, which was nice or whatever. So thank you for tuning in. Um, this was a good show. It was definitely a good show. I can't I can't come out and give the show a bad grade. I mean, it's a little bit of a cop out to have it be like a three on three, but with the exception of the women's Survivor Series tag, every single match made sense of why it turned out the way it turned out. So, you know, I guess you know, I guess because backstage they didn't want SmackDown to have the advantage. I guess that's why they had um they had the double count out in the women's match and they let Lana pick up they let Lana pick up that victory. I mean it's not like she's gonna get a title shot for that or anything anyway, but um No, but overall it was a good show. I would give the show I would definitely give the show like a solid eight. I would give the show a solid eight. Um you know, f- um favorite match of the night I you know would have to be um the Sasha Banks Asuka match and the Street the Street Profits um New Day match. Those were the two best matches. I mean the Lashley match was cool, but that's only if you want to see Zami Zayn get his ass beat. So <laughs> solid eight overall. And uh, like I said, and good pay per view. So we got we got wall games coming up next and then TLC and then we'll close out this uh this 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 crazy twenty twenty year. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about the Survivor Series. About let me know what you thought about the outcomes for each matches. What did you think of? What, like what reasons do you think was why certain things turned out the way that they did? And let me know the rating that you give the show as well. So again, until next time, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you'll know when new videos are going up. And until next time, everybody, take care. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. And I'm out this bitch.